All right, let's bring you back here now north of the border. And I want to bring you to a live shot, actually, that we've been watching this morning. And this is at uh, Young and Bloor, where you can see this is one of many businesses now boarded up. This is the Nordstrom. There was a peaceful protest last weekend, but with officials monitoring plans for more demonstrations this weekend, uh, some are concerned. There are concerned the rallies may turn tense, as we've seen in the U.S. So I want to begin here. And with that, plus all of your COVID news, let's bring in Mayor John Tory, who joins us via Skype this morning. Good morning to you, Mayor. Good morning, Mel. Uh, I want to look at those shots. I, I drove in this morning and noticed every day more businesses starting to board up in anticipation of what we could potentially see this weekend. As mayor of the city, uh, what are the optics in seeing some of the businesses doing that? And, and what is your message here? Well, the optics aren't good. Uh, but my message is that I really, really hope that the kind of affirmation of Toronto values and the Toronto way of doing things, which uh, manifested itself in a very peaceful uh, protest, very peaceful but heartfelt protest by people who feel justifiable hurt and anguish about uh, events we see going on around us uh, when it comes to uh, anti-black racism and anti-Indigenous racism, that nonetheless, we can do this uh, on a continuing basis the Toronto way. Uh, which just says that we protest peacefully, we make our, our views known, uh, we push for action, uh, but that we don't engage in that kind of senseless uh, violence that we've seen in the United States, which I think is the work of, you know, people who really don't reflect the majority way of doing things there, but for sure not here. Mayor Tory, we've heard um, from Prime Minister Trudeau, we've heard from Premier Ford speaking about um, the systemic racism that does exist, uh, and I think we need to acknowledge that. Uh, what is your take on where we stand in our city and what work needs to be done? Well, I think we were out ahead, actually, in terms of measures actually undertaken. Uh, under my leadership, we established, I guess, two years ago now, at least two years ago now, the first in North America uh, confronting anti-black racism unit inside the city of Toronto. And it's been working with the police on improved training. It's been working on, uh, you know, pro various programs in the community to make sure we can, uh, you know, can stop something that has gone on for a long, long time. Uh, you know, the notion that anybody would deny that there is some element of uh, systemic racism in Toronto or other places in Canada is... It's just not realistic. I mean, the fact is that you have a different experience in your life if you are black or, for that matter, brown or, in some cases, you know, indigenous and other kinds of racial, racialized communities. You have a different experience walking into a store. You have a different experience driving a car. You have a different experience in your job. Uh, some of the most senior people here at City Hall that I sat down with who have done well in the public service and risen up to the top ranks but who are black have told me of some of the obstacles they faced on the way there so that we've just got to deal with these things and, and uh, you know, do various things to address them better training, uh, more education, and also address some of the uh, the deficits that have arisen as a result of that in terms of trying to help help people lift themselves up and, and have a fair shot at being everything they want to be, especially the young people. You mentioned the anti-black racism unit. We did feature them yesterday here on Breakfast Television with our Tammy Sutherland. A number of recommendations put forward. Do you see um, the implementation of these recommendations being expedited um, or perhaps even beefing up the unit itself? I had a meeting with uh, probably some of the very same people that were Anthony Morgan and uh, Denise Campbell and others uh, yesterday to talk about exactly that. Uh, we were moving ahead with these things anyway, but, you know, like a lot of things, there are opportunities that present themselves sometimes to give you uh, an extra impetus to speed things up and to make even more progress and progress that is visible and can be felt by the black uh, communities in Toronto. And so the answer to that is yes. Uh, we discussed some things yesterday we can move forward with on a more expedited basis so as to uh, have the community, those who protested so peacefully in that Toronto way last weekend, understand that that was uh, an effort that helped to produce more attention and more results for us, including on policing, where we've done a lot. Uh, and, and the biggest thing we're doing now is community policing, where we're putting officers into communities, uh, and they're going to be there for three years at a time. They're going to be sort of walking the beat in that old-fashioned way, but hopefully in so doing, restoring the trust that was eroded over time. And it's not useful to sit and point fingers of blame on that. It's just useful to do something about it, which we're doing through the Community Policing Initiative, and that was part of the police budget for this year. So when people talk about cutting that back, they're going to cut back some of the initiatives we put in place to precisely address uh, some of these uh, issues that we have in our community. Uh, when we speak about community, there is a perception right now. We are looking at this latest SIU case. I know you cannot speak to the latest when it comes to the death of Regis Kroczynski Perquette, um, but can you speak to what you hope comes of this investigation uh, from both sides? 
Well, the first thing I hope comes from it is a quick result, because at the end of the day, you know, it strikes me that the kind of time to be doing these interviews is faster than they've been doing them. We've had almost a week, I think, or maybe about a week past now since that tragedy took place. And, you know, it, it doesn't help to have time pass by and have all kinds of speculation and media reports and whatnot going on in the face of a, of a real tragedy that really has a lot of people uh, very hurt and, and, and angered and, and upset in the community. And, and I understand, including starting with the family members. So I just think they should get at it. I know they are. Um, we should stop having leaks because they don't help. Uh, you know, whether they're leaks that are accurate or not, it doesn't matter. They're just not helpful to um, getting the whole discussion going into some uh, an angrier kind of debate. And they should get on with that. And I think that would be the most important thing. They are uh, a, a body, I can assure people, that are completely objective. In fact, the police people don't like them much, you know, and that's a proof positive of the fact that they operate independently. Um, and they will come to a conclusion. And then if that conclusion isn't, for some reason, satisfactory, we can see where we go from there. But I think that's the first thing we've got to have is their report soon and get the interviews done soon. You know, the, the other thing about interviews is if you don't do them right after the event that, that you're investigating, people are going to forget things. And uh, so I just think we got to get on with that. Thank you for that, Mayor. I do want to get to COVID-19, of course. We're looking at rebuilding of our city. And uh, let's first begin with the mobile testing. We are uh, live at one location right now. It's the second pop-up that we're seeing in uh, the Scarborough, one Scarborough neighborhood. Um, hundreds we saw turn out just a couple days ago. Uh, your take on how, the, how this is all going, as well as contact tracking, because the tracking of these cases is so very important. I think the tracking is going well. Uh, we had some work to do on making sure we got it up to the kinds of standards that have been set, and there's been a big improvement. And they've hired on. They went started with 50 people doing the tracking, which for people who are watching that don't know is the kind of detective work that comes uh, comes up after a positive test, where you then go to the person that has the positive test and say, where were you? Who were you with? And it's not in any accusatory way. It's just a way of finding out who else you might have spread the virus from or got it from. And so that work is going much better. Uh, we have 500 people now, starting with 50. The provincial testing, I think, started off with a lot of different problems, and they're responsible for that testing. But I think that thanks to, uh, you know, the encouragement of the Premier and other things, they've got their act together better now. And I think these mobile testing sites, I met with all the mayors from the GTHA uh, yesterday, and we all agreed that we should have many more of these mobile testing sites as soon as possible. And I'm sure we'll all, we're all willing to help to make sure that can be possible so that people can feel comfortable going to get tested, which they should, if they have any symptoms at all or if they have any worry about being exposed to someone with COVID-19. So I think the more of these sites we can have, the better. It's a good thing. Uh, and it helps us to sort of ferret out, uh, you know, where people are who have the test, and then you can investigate further from there. Mm -hmm. As we look towards stage two of reopening our city, um, everyone's asking questions about the patios. No doubt this is going to have to have that regional approach, as we see a lot of municipalities having zero or very few active cases. Toronto and Peel, very different. Uh, what have those discussions looked like with the province, and how where do we stand with a, that potential reopening there? The discussions with the province are good with respect to patios. I will have a significant announcement today uh, with respect to our plans to significantly make available additional patio space, which is going to be good for people because they'll have a chance to enjoy more patios, expanded patios, patios in places on the streets and sidewalks and other properties nearby existing patios. Uh, and uh, that will also help the businesses, of course, because when they come back to business, these patios, uh, they will have uh, perhaps some uh, likely some uh, physical distancing requirements on them so that not every table on existing patios could be occupied, for example. So I think this is going to help a lot. I think it's going to make for a more pleasant summer after a pretty dismal spring and winter that we had. And uh, the province has been extremely cooperative in making sure that's possible under provincial alcohol rules. With respect to the date on which these kinds of patios might open, still don't know. I'm guessing it's going to be a few weeks yet because we still haven't seen the improvement in the numbers that uh, we need. But we're certainly all aiming for something that might come along uh, Oh, let's say in the Canada Day, uh, you know, neighborhood. But I'm just speculating on that. I, I don't know. It's up to the province to make that decision. We're talking with them every day. And we certainly don't want to see them do it too soon and run the risk of a second wave or some further spread of this virus. So, you know, keep our fingers crossed for something just a few weeks from now. And people will then be able to look forward to expanded patios, not just the good old ones they were used to. Okay. And in the meantime, we'll uh, hang on to the ice cream trucks and the food trucks. <laughs> Mayor Tory, we appreciate your time this morning. Thank you so much for discussing all of these uh, very important topics with us. Appreciate it. Thank you, Mel. Have a great day. You too.